Welcome to our lecture online. In this series, we're going to take a closer look at friction, what friction actually is, and how to calculate and how to determine friction forces between surfaces. So what is friction? And one of the reasons why it's sometimes confusing when we talk about friction is because there's actually three different things related to friction. They're called friction, friction force, and coefficient of friction. And we'll touch upon each one of them. But let's concentrate here on the term friction. And the definition is that the friction is equal or defined as resistance to relative motion between two surfaces in contact. So whenever the surface is in contact to one another, friction offers resistance to relative motion between the two surfaces. Now the motion can be a sliding motion, where two surfaces are sliding over one another, rolling motion, where one is rolling over another, so that the contact between the two surfaces are in essence is static because they're not sliding, but one is rolling over the other. And we can also talk about friction even though there's no motion at all. The two objects are simply sitting side by side, touching one another, but they're not moving, yet we do talk about friction in those cases as well. So we'll see some examples of that. Now, friction is really caused by the fact that surfaces are not perfectly smooth. If we take a very close look at surfaces of two objects that are in contact with one another, we see that under microscope especially, that there's quite a bit of undulation on those surfaces. There's jagged edges, there's little holes, there's little extrusions, so forth. So when those two surfaces slide over one another, or one rolls over one another, or you try to push against one of the surfaces to try and make it move relative to the other, those uneven portions of the surface cause it to be more difficult for that motion to exist. That's why we talk about resistance to that relative motion. The more friction there is, the harder it is to get to those two surfaces to move relative to one another. And that's the concept of friction. Now notice we can say that the amount of friction is proportional to, and that's what that symbol means, it's proportional to the roughness of the surfaces. The rougher the surfaces, the greater the friction. The smoother the surfaces, the smaller the friction. Notice we also will be talking about two different kinds of friction called kinetic friction and static friction. And of course, we'll be talking about the friction forces. Notice here that there's a force acting on this block that presumably has some mass M. And of course, it'll be pushing down against the floor or whatever the surface is over which we're trying to make it slide. And the force pushing down here would be MG. And then there'd be a normal force pushing back and the magnitude of normal force is equal to mg, and because of that, and that interaction between the two surfaces, there are going to be friction forces. And so, in order to overcome those friction forces, we must be pushing or pulling with a force greater than the friction force in order to make things move. If you do not exceed the friction forces, then you cannot make the object move. And also, we think of friction forces as retarding forces, meaning it may slow things down or it may cause acceleration not to be as great with friction forces as compared to without friction forces. So when you hear friction, you simply think about resistance to relative motion. It could be rolling motion, sliding motion, or it could be no motion at all because the friction may be so great and the force applied to the object so small that the object simply cannot move and therefore, in a static situation, we still talk about friction as well. Hopefully that clears things up a little bit, and we'll have some more videos going into more of the detail about friction and friction forces. And we will also talk about the concept of a coefficient of friction, but that will come in later videos, so stay tuned.